So I'm just about to harvest and replant the back garden. So I thought I'd do a quick tour around just to show you what it looks like now. And then a bit later on in the month, I'll do another tour to show you it all nicely replanted. So it's time for a tour of the kitchen garden. And these are my main beds. So we've got lettuce here, onions interplanted with parsnips there. Lettuce is there, nice mix. This is my favourite summer one, this is Canasta, this is uh, Navara, Canasta, Navara, Canasta, Luini, Navara, uh, Smile, Oak Leaf and Bijou. And then down there I've got beetroot interplanted with garlic and there's a mix there of the golden beetroot and bold hardy red beetroot. And it's got a long way to go that, but it's no problem that because I've got loads of lovely beetroot on the allotment, which will be ready, well, fairly soon now. I've got some spinach. And again, I've got lots of spinach on the allotment, so I don't need this bed yet, but it will be ready probably in two weeks time. And then another really lovely bed of lettuce. I'm doing the video today actually, because I'm harvesting this lettuce, just the outer leaves today, and uh, it doesn't look quite as nice when you've harvested it, but it looks, still looks pretty good. Lots of people ask me what I do with the spent potato compost, and I just use it to mulch the beds, and as you can see, I've got a couple of little volunteer potatoes there that I need to pull out. So here I've got what's left of my collets. Um, just planted new ones, actually, on the allotment and they're underplanted with field beans. That was just an experiment to see whether in this shady little spot I could actually do that interplant, and I can, so I will be doing that again. And I just want the field beans for the tips, which we uh, use as a spinach sub alternative. And then we've got um, carrots in there, so those are touchon. So let's just take a look in that direction. So these huge posts, which are going to run all the way along here, are for my climbing plants. So right now I've got peas in there, but I'm going to have beans in this part down here. And kind of again, my <laughs> glorious uh, brassicas. They looked actually really nice until the storms that we just had. And they were, you know, standing up quite nicely, but uh, they've not got long left now. I'm probably pulling those out today and I'll start replanting. So here I've got garlic interplanted with spring onions. So you can see the garlic there and the spring onions there. And don't they look gorgeous? These are uh, North Holland blood red. One of my favourite spring onions for eating in spring. I have lots of different spring onions that I eat at other times of year, but North Holland Blood Red is really fantastic in spring. And then these are obviously just kales and cabbages. Quite a lot of these cabbages have gone to seed, but we're quite happy about that because we just eat the outer leaves. But we've still got a few that are hearting up there. And I always grow multiple varieties of cabbage because you're never quite sure which ones are going to go to seed and which ones aren't. And uh, that just defines the eating order. They're all these leaves still get eaten. And then we've got spring onions. Kind of waiting for an interplant, really. Actually, maybe they're not spring onions. Maybe they're main crop onions. And then these are spring onions down here. And then these are peas. These are Oregon sugar pod and these are just a sweet um, shelling pea, sugar snap sort of pea. And then these are alderman. So these are big climbing peas. So obviously I've planted these in succession and I've got another succession actually on the allotment which are doing great. Um, they're flowering now so they will come before these and then another little bed of kale waiting to be cleared. 
So this patio looks a bit bleak at the moment and it'll look a lot better when all the potatoes come through. I've got 40 tubs I think of potatoes just all in little corners and most of them are planted two tubers per pot. These really big ones are three tubers per pot. A lot of my containers I put green garlic so I've been harvesting green garlic from all of these down here and it's absolutely gorgeous it is I think you know one of the most underrated crops because basically this is a single bulb of garlic and I pop this in in November time and from April we've been harvesting amazing green garlic where you eat the whole stem chopped up and of course you've still got a garlic bulb here so you know this time of year it's such a great trade one little bulb of uh, garlic and it is a little bulb as well um, because we always just choose the smallest bulbs because we're not really going for uh, big garlic bulbs for storage we're just using up the dregs of the garlic from last year and converting it into this amazing food. So we basically use the stem as a, like a sweet leek. Um, it's very garlicky as well. And the bulb, obviously, just as garlic. And it's such a popular crop. In this corner is where my outdoor potato, uh, tomatoes go. And they do very well, actually, in this corner. It's really quite sunny although it's obviously not sunny right now and again just more green garlic so we're harvesting two tubs of these every week right now and then down this end of the garden this is the fruit garden so here we've got the blueberries and they're running all the way along here and they're looking pretty good I'm really excited to be getting blueberries again. I've not eaten blueberries for quite a long time. And they have got gooseberries in the middle. So these are just little cuttings that I took a couple of years ago and potted on. Just transplanted them into their final pots. So we've no huge crop on them obviously this year. But next year we should get a really good crop of those. So I'm really happy with those. And then we've got strawberry beds. And I'm quite pleased to see there's no flowers on those because these are my main crop strawberries. My second early strawberries have just got their flowers and my first early strawberries are ready. And they're in the polytunnel. And so, uh, yeah, I always really happy to see them coming in succession. Uh, I've got raspberries there, a mix of summer and autumn fruiters. And then we've got perennial kales there. They are really coming into their own right now. We're eating a lot of perennial kale. And then this bed, just a few field beans there. And they're going to be harvested today because I'm putting Brussels sprouts in there and I'm just going to leave enough space for myself to get around the back there to harvest the uh, perennial kale. But all of that rest of that bed is going to be Brussels sprouts. And there's a new perennial kale plant there that replaced that great long one down the back there that I harvested a few weeks ago. And that one was actually grown from seed. So one of my perennial kale one of my perennial kale plants went to seed, which is extremely unusual. And so, uh, yeah, I sowed some of those seeds and I've given a few away. And I'm pretty excited to see how it does. We've managed to squeeze in quite a few trees. This used to be an amazing apple tree. I absolutely loved it. And then it blew down in the gales. So we put a cherry tree in. And uh, I'm pretty pleased that I did actually, because I love cherries even more than all of apples and we've got quite a few apples now on the allotment this is my mini greenhouse i do a, keep a lot of my seed starts in here and i've got some nice spinach and 
Pixel sprouts. Kales. Mm. More kales. Red vein sorrel. Spring onions. Pixel sprouts. Collats. And those are some more of those uh, perennial kale plants that I grew from seed. I really find it very convenient to have this little greenhouse here. Uh, much easier to look after than the ones on the allotment. And I've got another cherry tree here. And this is just a little bit further on. Again, lots of different varieties. Little apple tree here in this bucket. This is my first of my outdoor courgettes. Still a little bit chilly for it but uh, it was in the conservatory and it was taking up too much space so it's just got to try and survive outside now. I've got two more courgettes in the polytunnel as well so I'm not so worried. And down the side of the house it's pretty much dedicated to trees, cherry trees, apple trees, These are more cherry trees. Oh, and there's some perennial kale cuttings that I took. Not quite sure what to do with those plants, looking so healthy. But uh, it's where to plant them, of course. It's always a challenge for me. Pear tree. This pear tree does amazingly well. It's uh, quite a big tree now. It really do need to uh, prune it back a bit. It's just in one of these little buckets. I did do a video all about growing trees in buckets but uh, the key is just to keep them well watered so about a watering can a week in summer and underneath keep the, about six inches down here is basically for this wood chip and fertilizer I, I like concentrated cow manure uh, and a bit of blood fish and bone and then more potatoes every nook and cranny basically has potatoes and then this is, we always put kale in here, it does really well. Um, but in between this kale and the winter kale, we're just going to pop some spinach in there. And then this is the front garden. It's lovely and quiet today, Sunday morning. So we just redid this, this was all lawn. Now we've just got this little walking strip around here and uh, it's looking lovely we're only just starting planting it really so we've got red cabbages which hopefully are going to kind of fan out around that uh, old water butt, st water butt top we've got collets down this edge here we've got a bed of kale here three beds of onions all different types some flowers and then these beds have not been planted yet and we haven't quite decided what we're going to put in but the clats are looking really nice <coughs> lots of weeds coming up in this bed i don't know what those are actually but uh, anyway it's debbie's responsibility this uh, garden I do the back garden and then just this uh, rockery here which is just kind of bursting into life and a lovely apple tree I actually brought this from uh, my family's orchard when we sold it for housing and this was the only tree that survived and it was my favorite and I just saved some pips planted them so it's not exactly the same as my favorite tree but it's close enough this is quite precious that one and that one there is a sucker from this one so basically just a tree that grew from the root that came near the surface which is kind of a bit weird um, at least first I thought it was just a pip that had rooted but now I actually found the root from this tree and then this has just grown up from the root and it's really weird because this is a different tree it's a different apples on it there's 
slightly similar, but they're, you know, they're, these are quite red, whereas the you know, red skinned, whereas these are quite uh, kind of a stripy uh, red and yellow skin. So it's a bit, anyway, we don't understand it, but that's what it is. That's it. Big changes from last month and big changes to come later on in the month when I uh, get all this replanted. I love planting, so I'm so excited to get everything cleared and chopped up. And I'm also really keen to have this kind of wall all the way down here of, uh, of peas and beans and any other climbing plants that I can think of. And I'm putting a top on here as well. And I'm going to use that to support my bean poles and also some nice lights as well. So here's a quick look at today's harvest, slightly down on the previous week, but we are in the middle of the hungry gap. So we've got purple spread and broccoli here, and pilot, that's the first harvest of those actually, looking quite nice. And mixed brassicas, these are all leaves here baby tiny cabbage hearts from clearing a bed. New season carrots, turnips, calabrese, big onions for cooking. Plenty of those. Asparagus and then quite a bit of spinach. And we'll be down on spinach I think in subsequent weeks. Then I've got pea shoots, a few of those, and field bean tops, and parsley. So that's not too bad, quite happy with that. So here's a quick look at the salad mixes. The grapes and the tomatoes are not homegrown, but everything else is. So quite a nice selection there. So I hope you liked this quick video. My name is Steve Richards. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel and I'll see you soon.